In this video, we will discuss the problem x total shapes. The problem says that we have been given a grid which is of dimension n cross m and it consists of zeros and x's. So the, to the task is to find the number of x total shapes in the given grid. So we have to note that x shape consists of one or more adjacent x's and diagonals are not included. So basically the problem means that we can go if a particular cell is x then we can go in the left side, in the right side, we can go in the upward side, we can go in the, in the downward side as well because these four directions, let's say if we are con if we are at a particular cell which is containing x, so if we go in the leftward side, we go in the upward side, we go in the rightward side and we go in the downward side. So these adjacent, like these are the adjacent cells, so they will be considered, right, they will be considered as adjacent. But it says that diagonals are not included in adjacent, so you cannot go in this direction, these kind of directions are forbidden. So what you have to do is you have to find the total number of x shapes in this. So let's quickly consider the sample example so that we have more clarity on this test case. So suppose this is the sample example that has been given. Suppose we have been given the sample example as x then o and then x and after that we have been given o then x and then o and we have been given x, x and x. So now in this case if we will observe, so if we will observe for this particular x, so we can easily observe one thing that we cannot like we cannot go left side we cannot go upwards we cannot go rightwards we cannot go downwards so in this case we can simply say that there is uh, no other x that i can reach from here so this is one one x of its kind right this is one x shape right this is one x so i'll mark my count here as one okay and then if i will check for this x so for this x, if I go in the upward, not possible. If I go in the right side, not possible. If I go in the downward direction, not possible. If I go in the leftward direction, so there's a zero, so it's not possible. So I can say that for this x also, I cannot reach any other x. I cannot have any other x along with it. So I'll mark the count as two, okay? Because this is a different x and this is a different x, right? They are not together. Now, if I will start, let's say from this x, right? When I start from this x, so I can simply say, like I'm marking this uh, as done, right? These two x's are done. Now, when I start from this x, so I'll move to the left, it's not possible. When I move to the upward direction, it's a zero, it's not possible. When I move to the right side, it's a zero, right? After that, when I move to the, to the downward direction, let's say I'm calling a DFS in the downward direction, then I can say that I reach this particular cell. When I reach this cell, so let's say if I move to the left, so I will visit this cell as well, this X as well, okay? When I move left, not possible. When I move up, not possible. When I move X right towards the right, because there can be one more scenario. Suppose there this X, 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 right? And what I have is, let's say I move towards the right direction, then I move downwards, then I move leftwards, and then I move upwards, okay? Then again, I will move uh, rightwards, downwards, backward, right? So there's a cycle that I can always stuck inside. So if I want to remove myself from a cycle, so I can say that if I don't want to be stuck inside a cycle, then in that case, what we can do is whenever we, vis whenever we visit a particular cell, we can mark it as zero. So that the next time when we to go to the right, so next time we'll mark it as zero, then we go down, we'll mark it as zero. Then we go to this direction also, we'll mark it as zero. Then when we go up, then it will not be possible because the actually the cell will become zero. So in that case, I will save myself from getting inside a cycle also. So what you can see here is, if let's say I call the DFS, right? So I, I call the DFS for three directions. Now I'm calling down. So when I call down, so this X actually will be marked as zero now, okay? There was an X here, but now it's marked as zero. After that, this X is visited, so I'll mark it as zero as well, okay? So that I don't get stuck inside a cycle. After this, when I move to the left, so it seems to be possible, so I'll move to this X, then I'll mark it as zero as well, okay? And I'll try to go in all the four directions. So when I go here, not possible. When I go up, not possible. When I go towards the right side, not possible towards the zero. And when I go down, it's not possible. After this, I'll come back. When I come back to this call from the left, so left call is done. Now when I call upward side, so it's uh, it's a zero, not possible. When I call the downward side, it's not possible. But when I call to the right side, so there's an X, so I, I will reach to that cell and I'll go to that cell. Now what I'll do is, I'll try to go call to the left, but it is actually zero. Upward is also zero. Rightward is also zero. Downward is also zero, right? So we can simply say that now the the transition has been done right now the counting has been done so another like there was another case when i called the dfs call right so there are three times that i've called the dfs call one one time i've called for this x another time i've called for this x and another time i've called for this x and notice that this situation the situation was like xox then oxo right uh zero x uh zero uh then it was ooo right this was the case like uh, it was xxx right here so in this case if i will observe so basically what did I do? I called one time DFS when I was here, like then another DFS was called here 
and another DFS was called for this complete region. Why? Because what will happen now? If you will observe now, so in this case, when you see the updated uh, grid, so in this case, you can easily observe that now when I will go and call for this cell, right? When I'll try to call for this cell, so actually I'll not be able to call the DFS for this cell because I was calling the DFS for those cells which have the value as X only. But now this DFS is already visited or it has a value zero now updated. So it, since it is already visited, so that is why it is having zero. So I'll not call a DFS from there. So I can say that this particular component was visited as one at once. So we can say we can say that the count is coming out to be three. The number of DFS is that we are calling is nothing but three. And in this problem, you will get the answer for this test case. The answer is nothing but three. And that is nothing but the number of connected components. You can see that this particular whole component, this whole component, these, these four X's were connected to each other, right? So when I call for a particular component, right? When I call for a particular uh, cell of this component, right? So in that case, all the others, all the other cells will also get visited because I'm calling a DFS in all the four directions from that cell. And for if I visit another cell, then I'm calling the DFS in another four directions, right? So I can say that there are three connected components, basically, right? There are three connect, uh, three components uh, in this particular given grid. So basically what we can observe is we needed to do what we needed to do nothing, but we needed to count the number of connected components in this graph, right? We needed to count the number of connected components. And whenever we visit a particular cell, so we are marking it as uh, we are marking it as nothing but uh, zero or we are blocking it or maybe we can use a visited array for this for uh, for the purpose of marking it as visited so that we don't visit it again. So we can say that one is this component, another is this and here the third component is this. So basically what we have to do in uh, total XJF problem, we have to basically count the number of connected components of X in uh, when we move when we are allowed to move in four directions that is upward downward rightward or leftward so in this case we can simply say that we can run a dfs call in all the four directions when we reach a particular cell and if it is zero then we can return from there if it's an invalid cell then also we can return okay otherwise uh, we can mark it as zero if it was x and we can call the dfs in all the four directions for that particular thing right and all the cells like all the all the cells which are having x when i visit them for a particular component so they will be marked as zero so there will be no further calls for the same component. So in that case, I, the DFS, the number of times that I'll call the DFS will uh, be indicated by count and count will tell me the number of connected components in this case. That is nothing but the X total shape for this problem. And previously, this problem has been asked in Amazon and Microsoft. So let's quickly try and write the code for this approach. So what I'll be doing is I'll be having this function. And what we can do here is we can say that first of all, I'll find N. N is equal to nothing but uh, the grid dot size. That is the number of rows. After this, I'll find M as well. So M is equal to nothing but uh, grid of zero dot size, the column. I need to find the number of columns. So that's nothing but uh, the grid of zero dot size. After this, we also need a count. So initially, I'll mark a count as zero. And then what we will be doing is we'll say that uh, we'll simply say that our for loop will start from here. So for loop, like we'll run for each and every cell. And if it is not visited, if it is having a value X, in that case, we'll count it and then we'll call the DFS call for it so that all the uh, X's which are in the same component as that particular X, so they get visited. So I'll say that, okay, J starts on zero, J is lesser than M, then we can do a J plus plus. And if, if it happens that the current uh, grid of IJ, if the current uh, cell is having the value as X, so if it's X, in that case, what we need to do is we need to count this as a component, right? We need to count this as a single X shape and we need to increment the count and we need to call the DFS. And when we call the DFS, so we will pass I, we'll pass the current cell J, like we'll pass the current cell IJ, we'll pass N, we'll pass M and we'll pass the grid as well. We don't need to take the visited array here because what we can simply do is we can uh, try to update our grid whenever uh, we visit a cell X, so we can mark it as zero so that it gets blocked. And in the end, we can simply return the count that will be nothing but the number of connected components in this graph, you can say uh, in this given grid, or you can say the total X, X total shapes in this, according to the definition of this problem. So what we'll be doing is we'll be writing a DFS function, which will be void in nature. So we can write a DFS function here simply and we'll pass int i comma int j. Okay. After this, we'll, after this, we'll pass uh, the n and m int n comma int m. And after we have done this, so we will also pass the grid. So let me just quickly copy the grid from here only. 
okay so we'll be passing the grid as well after we have passed notice that we are passing it by reference so any change we make to the grid will be reflected in the uh, actual grid original grid as well okay so if uh, it happens that i fall out of the grid if i is lesser than zero okay as i said like if uh, if suppose that i was at this particular cell so can i if i was at this cell so can i move to the left no can i move to the upward direction no so because why because in here i is lesser than zero here j is less than zero right and similarly i cannot move down from here right and similarly i cannot move uh, from a particular from this cell which is containing x i cannot move to the right side so whenever i fall out of the grid so i will return uh, i'll simply return so if j is i is less than 0 j is less than 0 or if i is equal to equal to n or if j is equal to equal to m okay in those cases i should be returning or if it happens that the current grid of ij if it's e actually equal to an o if it is an o in that case also it's not visitable because it's not containing x so i, I should return otherwise if this gr grid was containing x so i've since i visited it so i should mark it as uh, zero so that i can block it and then i'll call the dfs call in all the four directions so i'll call the dfs for i plus one comma j that means i'm moving in the downward direction i'll pass nnm and i'll pass the grid so this is nothing but when i'm moving in the downward direction this is when we are moving in the downwards direction and similarly we'll call the dfs for i minus 1 comma j comma n comma m uh, i'll pass the grid as well this is when we are moving in the upward direction and we need to call the dfs for other two directions that is the uh, rightward direction so when i'm moving right so it will be nothing but i comma j plus 1 comma n comma m comma the grid okay this is when i'm moving in the right uh, direction and similarly i'll call a dfs when i'm moving to the left direction so the, uh, i uh, this will be i comma j minus 1 comma n comma m comma the grid i'll pass and this is when i'm moving to the left direction so one by one all the uh, cells that will be visited they will be marked as zero so that next time in a particular component if uh, if i call in a particular component if i call for the first cell of that particular component all the other cell also get visited and they are marked as zero so that next time the the dfs call is not done for them because when i'll try to check so they will no longer be x they will become zero okay so this is what i'm trying to do let's try and compile this code it seems to work on the samples it gives the output as three let us try and submit this code as well so it's working it's getting tested i think it has passed all the test cases so you can see that it was able to pass all the test cases 204 test cases that were there now talking about the time complexity of this approach so since we are visiting every cell exactly once so the time complexity will be nothing but order of n cross m because the total number of cells will be order uh, like n cross m and the space complexity will be order of one because we are not using any extra space for this problem because we are changing the grid itself so that's why it will be order of one in case if you understood the explanation so make sure to hit the like button and comment down understood as well thank you